How's it going, folks? Coming up from you from somewhere new today. We're up at Hacienda Rosa because I'm finally out of my two-week, 14-day quarantine so I can actually go and be out and about in different places. So this is Hacienda Rosa. I'll try to give you a little bit of a view of all the beautiful things we got going here. And this is only the beginning because this is a huge property. The gardens you're seeing here all started as grass. And now this has become the main home garden through terrace systems. We'll cover that in a different video. You got booming bean production, zucchinis coming on, etc. Down here we have cassava growing on the slope here to help prep the soil for a kind of long-term garden bed. You can see here things in the tropics gets really overgrown really easily. And then we have a whole forest system down here that we're developing into production. As you can see, still in the early stages, but after Hurricane Maria hit the island back in uh, 2017, it cleared a lot of this space. And so they've been basically keeping it maintained. And then when I got down here about a year ago, we started trying to make plans for how we're gonna develop this into food production within the forest, instead of destroying the forest for food production. So that's where we're about here. Today's video, however, is gonna be on the chickens. Once again, I don't know if you've seen a common theme in my, in my vlogs here, is I mention chickens a lot because they're a perfect way to get started in the kind of home setting. And they're also a perfect way to build fertility in a place where you might not have it. So what I'm showing you here is our mobile chicken coop. This is inspired by Justin Rhodes and his Chickshaw Mini-Me. We just happened to have this old roof from a playhouse. And uh, Monica is a teacher. Monica is the, the kind of owner here. She's one of the owners here. And this whole top part here came from a old kind of old playhouse at her Montessori school that they were no longer using. So we basically just took that, added it on top of the base of the actual Chickshaw made me and they just started laying eggs a few days ago. So these guys are just starting their production journey. Let's see if we have any other eggs in there in a minute. But this is a great little design because it allows you to have, this specific coop can easily hold up to 16 birds, 12 probably a little more comfortably than 16, but definitely easily 16. And then you just have a mobile portable net. This is the Premier One Shocker Knot fence, which I like because it has small openings at the bottom so if you do have the little baby chicks that they they won't get out and then there's the bigger openings just above that which is pretty much the standard size there now we don't actually electrify this net although it is built to be electrified this is nice called the shock or not it's designed so that you can add an electric shock to it or you can live without the electric shock if you're in a place that doesn't have as many predators the main predators here for the chickens are the red-tailed hawks so not so much keeping the fence out and then of course any dogs or stray cats wandering around, which we do have a lot of, but there's two dogs and two cats on this property, so we have to do a little bit less worrying about that. So yeah, this is the Chickshaw. You might recognize this from very similar design, actually the exact same design as my, my homestead watering system at home. Nice and easy to fill, it keeps it clean. You can see they're right on top of it, perching right on top of it, and they uh, decide to fertilize for us or drop their manure it's not gonna get in the water. It's very useful. These mama, these are new, these are newly producing. We got these a few, like, I think two months ago or so, something like that. So they're just kind of starting their production phase. Now, we I wanted a pitch roof on this. Justin Rhodes does not have a pitch roof, but we're in the tropics and we get a lot of rainfall. So I wanted to make sure that we actually had a roof and you can see this is not the perfect construction. Very happy to point that out. I'm the one who built this and uh, it's not perfect, but this is what we had to work with and we made sure it worked. And that's the key. Just work with what you got, guys. You don't need all the fancy things at the beginning. Just work with what you got and you can upgrade later. So this thing's been doing great for us. We've actually moved it all along the farm so far. Uh, this farm homestead, we're kind of turning it into a farm and food production here for them um, for long term. So let's take a look, see if they have any eggs in here. These guys are just producing. And look at that. Little baby eggs. Little babies. They're small. That's pretty typical for the new ones. 
there's three there there's not any in there so this system this is one of the reasons i like justin Rhodes' system so much is you can have these milk crates which are pretty easily accessible and uh, you set it up so you can just have two side by side in this mini me version of his chick shaw and the bigger version there's actually i think three or four side by side so you can have a lot of laying hens with this small flock size we only need two it's that's plenty more than enough they actually usually only use the one for whatever reason and that's funny we found that for a while they were only choosing the red one and then they always only chose the green one so it kind of goes back and forth which one they like the best so where we're standing whew, let's get you in a shot here hey where you're standing or where, where i'm standing uh this is all grass to start with and you can kind of see that in the where they're standing here this is all grass and overgrowth and about in the September of last year, we actually prepped this area to start being a garden bed. And then, to be completely frank, we just did not end up having the time to keep it going. Plus, we were at the end of the summer, and it was pretty pretty hot. And then I took uh, three weeks three weeks to go uh, do my other gig, so I was off island. Um, so I was not able to actually manage the system into full fruition. But what we did is prepped everything, planted a cover crop, and the cover crop grew. And then... Once that cover crop kind of got established and started taking over, we just allowed it to completely take over for the time being. And then now that we're actually able to manage it again, we're, we're, uh, we're spending a little more time here. We're going to put the chickens in here one more time. And that's because the chickens, ooh, roosters excited to start being in charge these days. What's nice is the chickens, having the chickens in here and having the chickens uh, with this coop that all the manure falls straight down below them. It actually is fertilizing as we move it. So we actually move this coop around, you know, once every week or two, depending on uh, their actual manure load. But originally, it was right here. And you can see we have lots of manure drops right here. And they're just going to mix that in to the soil and with all these little cover crops that are here. And eventually, this area will be bare of all these kind of weeds and stuff we don't want growing. And we can rebuild our garden beds and end up having production right here. So this is the kind of far side of the kitchen, kitchen slash home garden, depending on how you're looking at it. So right up the hill here, I don't know, you might have a little bit of a glare, but that's their main house up there. And again, I'm going to do a full tour of this property at some point, not today. But right up there, that's where their main kind of patio is, where my finger is right now. That's the entrance. And then their kitchen's right there. So the goal for this little whole plot right here was to have it so they could walk out from their kitchen, go down to their gardens, and they have two, two terraces up top there that they can plant and harvest from. This is more, this is turning into, an, again, another bed here. So we actually used this big rock as a foundation for this bed, added a couple big big logs there to kind of build it up, and then this whole thing is gonna be another bed. Right now it's planted a cassava, or a juca here, is that what they call it. And that's just like a root vegetable that uh, will probably not produce huge amounts, of, uh, huge amounts of roots this year because it's literally stuck cuttings of it into the pure clay soil here. So I, I suspect it's unlikely that we're going to get a great harvest from that. But the, uh, sorry, the rooster is being very talkative. But we're not going to get a great harvest, but what it's doing is loosening up that heavy, heavy clay soil for us. So those roots, as they grow, they're going to slowly open up, or open up, they're going to slowly expand, and that's going to loosen that soil. So next time we go in there to prep that bed for the next round of crops, it's going to be much more loose. And we're going to be able to use that and we, instead of actually harvesting those roots we might just leave them in the ground to rot or start growing again because that's just going to open up all these different kind of compost pathways within the soil so all the gardens up there let's see if i can get you turned around again without too much hassle all the gardens up there were started with chickens this entire slope was grass grass and just kind of this overgrowth just like here and we're turning it into garden beds by using the chickens. So these chickens scratch and manure and add all their delicious droppings. Delicious, I shouldn't really say delicious because it's certainly not, I wouldn't recommend eating it, but for the, for the soil and for, the, and for the, what we're trying to do here, it's delicious. So 
take that as you will. Anyway, so the uh, the chickens here, they're prepping by scratching, turning in their comp or their manure into the ground here, and then once they're done with this area, which will probably be another couple weeks, uh, we want to get to get down to pretty much almost bare soil, and then in that last couple that last week or two, we'll end up adding a lot of mulch and and organic material in here so they can scratch through, and then by the time they leave, they're going to have made this kind of heavy clay soil into a nice rich soil for us to start a garden bed on top of. This right here is the banana circle. This is a pretty common uh, permaculture design, especially in a tropical system. It's essentially a pit dug. It's about a, a six, six to eight eight foot wide and it's in the middle there um, and that's actually a pit it's about three feet deep we actually dug this right after hurricane maria and uh, i came down here for three weeks right after hurricane maria to help everyone with the recovery and uh, we dug this just to get something started and it's it ends up ended up being a really cool system uh, and we're still kind of developing it and obviously right now we're letting the chickens destroy it a little bit um, but what's nice about this 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 banana circle is that because these are they don't have any branches because they're bananas. We can put a whole bunch of them around in a, in a really tight area and not be interfering with each other and not be interfering with each other's uh, sunlight. So these bananas get nice and tall. They produce really well. And in the middle here, we put all of our organic bulk material that we have from around the property, especially big palm fronds that fall, stuff that's huge and just takes a long time to really break down. We throw it right in here. And in reality, this banana circle, the mulch should probably be about two, three feet higher at least. Um, but it's just where we are right now. We haven't actually gotten to refill it for a little while. So that's left. I haven't been here and it's just, this is not the top of our priority list. Bananas are still producing. They're still doing all right. I'll show you a little bit of that production right now. So this one, it's actually a pretty small rack. But typically, we get a pretty good rack off of these bananas on this banana circle. Banana flower here. So we started, this whole area started, and this whole slope really started like this. It's grassy. It was all grass. And what's cool about that is we're allowing the chickens to do the work of prepping this area and taking the grass away because the chickens naturally scratch as they are doing their doing their work. They like to scratch. So you can kind of see already here, we got where their feed is and we move this feed on a regular basis so that it's not all just sitting in one place because this stuff, this kind of feed, once it gets really wet and it, start, it starts to stink and ferment. And uh, as it does that, you know, it's a little harder to, uh, to control the, the grass growth because the, the grass just is gonna be completely smothered by all that. But what's nice is that's what we want here. We don't want the grass anymore. We want to transition it into garden beds. So when we refill it, we'll maybe put it right up here instead. And then they can start doing that. And then they're going to scratch through this area where all this, where all this feed is that had fallen from before. And they'll keep eating that and they'll keep scratching that. And that's going to end up being uh, essentially bare soil. And then from there, we'll seed it and make a another garden bed. So the plan with these guys is to essentially have them in here for another, it's, it really depends. I can't tell you, it's all based on how much they're scratching and how much they have, how much work they've done already. That's kind of what determines when we move them. So we don't move them until they're done their task. Right now their task is to rip out everything here so that we can start our garden beds. So they'll be moved when that's the time to move them, when that happens. But if we were doing something else, if we just wanted to rotate them through on grass as like a pasture to feed them, then we would absolutely not let them stay as long as they are because we don't want them to destroy that area. So it's really about how you manage them. It's what's the end goal of the project you're working on and how do you accomplish that end goal? With the chickens, they're doing a lot of the work for you. So we, we choose to use the chickens uh, to do that kind of scratching and tilling in for us. But in other parts of the property, we just want them to add fertility. And in those parts, we just let them be in a spot for maybe a week, two weeks until we saw that the soil was almost at the point of uh, disturbance. And then we'd move the net. And what's nice about this mobile net, and this is from Pr Pr Premier One, is the manufacturer. I really love their products and I, I'm certainly not, uh, 
I definitely advocate for their products, but I am not actually, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I, this is just me saying that I do like their products. This stuff is so light. This is a hundred foot long fence. It's super light. You can carry the whole thing. I mean, a, a regularly fit person would be able to carry this whole fence once it's all together um, and, and just walk around. It's maybe 30 to 40 pounds once it's all together. So it's super light or relatively light for the amount of fencing you're getting and it's super easy to move. And because our, our coop is mobile and it's on wheels there, uh, we can actually just roll the coop wherever we want it. So this becomes a mobile bed prep system or a mobile design disturbance system, uh, depending on where what we want to be doing. So once they're done in that little spot, we're actually going to move them down slightly into this grassy area right here. So it'll probably go to about maybe the base of this tree area and it'll kind of come along here. And what we're going to do down here below the banana circle there where they're standing right now, that's the banana circle from this angle. You can see how big those trees get. But right down here, we're going to have a big bed. And we're, all we're going to do is put big logs that we find, find down the forest here. We're just going to lay them out and we're going to fill all that up with nice rich topsoil um, that we get from a, a local a local supplier here and then that's going to be a sweet potato bed and then so this is the long term so this is about design strategies for this is the home garden still so you want it to be things that you can come and harvest on a regular basis but um, sweet potatoes is a, are a great crop to have as a supply for your food especially here in the tropics super easy to grow you just kind of basically have to get them started and they do all the work for you so we want to have sweet potatoes growing, but we don't necessarily want them to take up uh, a bed at the very top of the home garden. So we're gonna put those at the bottom because they take a long time to yield. It takes about six to eight months for the sweet potatoes to be ready. So we don't really want them to be right next to the kitchen or right next to where we're gonna be harvesting from because that means we're gonna have to walk past that and not actually take anything. The one benefit, this rooster really wants the attention more than me. The one benefit to having them nearby and, and even just having them here is the greens are edible for, for humans and for animals. So we can actually come and harvest those um, as a salad. And it's still within very quick, easy walking distance. It's probably about a 30 second to one minute walk from, from, their, from their house. Sorry guys, I'm bringing you all around. Ooh, you're going crazy. There you go. So that's their house right there. And all I have to do is walk right down the driveway and here they have their gardens. All right, bud, we get it. So what's also nice about having this little garden system here and right now for the chickens is, uh, at least not in the times of pandemic and normal times, right down there, is, it's called the Sugar Shack. So they actually have two rental houses on this property, uh, which they do Airbnb. So you can actually come and stay on this property and check it out and come do a tour with me around this property if you're so interested. And uh, so right next to the Sugar Shack and the parking for the Sugar Shack is these main garden beds that they're establishing and growing. So they get to show that off as a feature of their property and it's right next to where the guests are staying. And so if they have any questions and what the other thing that they like to do here is they'll actually offer for the guests just to go and harvest if they need anything, uh, if they have excess food there, if they have greens and actually things are in full production, the guests actually can come and harvest whatever they want from the garden and add that in as a kind of bonus to their stay here. We're also developing trail systems throughout the property, which I'm really excited about. We'll do, a, I'm gonna do a lot of videos up here because this is one of the properties I'm managing. So you'll see me a lot here and uh, we'll do a lot of uh, cool videos through the woods and do the forest systems. And then at some point we're gonna establish a main crop system on the property. So this is gonna really be a cool demonstration and a cool place to come and learn. And at some point we hope to host, uh, we hope to host workshops and, and volunteers and, and interns potentially at some point. And, we'll get this place up and running and, and make it a beautiful tropical permaculture paradise. So that's it today, using the chickens and just kind of the introduction to using our chickens to prep these garden beds for us so we can do less work and spend more time managing other parts of the system. Hope you guys have enjoyed. We'll do another, like I said, we'll be doing a lot of videos here so you'll get to see it, see everything in its full glory in the future. Just want to point that out because right there, inspired by Justin Rhodes and 
It's a really great system. I definitely recommend it. I am going to leave uh, links to his system. I think there's a couple links online where you can actually get the plans either for free or for an email address. And uh, you can actually use the plans to build it yourself. It's super easy to do. Anyone who has any sort of basic carpentry skills would be able to do this project. Um, definitely really, really easy. And you don't need to have this peaked roof or anything. It's usually just a flat roof, super easy and much lighter because that zinc roofing right there adds a lot of weight. Let me tell you, that would have been something I changed. Maybe do, use vinyl instead of, <laughs> instead of zinc because uh, anything you add to there means you have to push that around. So, all right guys, that's, that's me for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, we'll get you a lot more on the Hacienda Rosa home front and everything once we, once we get going. You guys have a great day. Thanks.